Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by the channel. I'm Infinite Enzo and this is Takedown Talk, Episode 4. Today we're taking a look at the Protex Strider SNG. Let's get into it. Why the Protex Strider SNG? Well, for starters, it's an awesome looking blade. Second, it's also very functional. And third, it takes the best of both worlds, merging Strider's iconic design and Protex's peerless level of quality. The Strider pattern, though not the most ergonomic or comfortable, has been a longtime favorite of mine, and it was my first real grill. Protex's finely crafted aluminum handle scales are knurled and grippy, providing excellent traction in hand and acting as a close analog to Strider's famous gunner grips. And thanks to the way the handle widens toward the butt end, it won't easily break from a tight hold. Both scales fit together flush, providing a feeling in hand similar to that of an integral knife. Since this is an automatic, the scales are basically identical in form. The edges are nicely beveled, but because of the blocky design, this can be an uncomfortable knife to use for long-term cutting. The 154cm blade features a low-shouldered saber grind, so it's not the sliciest option, but it still cuts pretty well, and it can more readily handle abusive jobs. 154cm is one of the best ingot steels available, and while it's not a super steel, it is well balanced with solid edge retention, toughness, and stainlessness. I like a finger choil on my knives, and this one is up there with the best. On the downside, since this is coupled with a large sharpening choil too, space for the actual cutting edge is lost when you compare it to the full length of the blade. Since this is an automatic, deployment is triggered with a button that also serves as a lock. The blade fires out forcefully on a large pivot and is held in the open position by the shaft of the button itself. If you're concerned about firing it, the knife can be deployed slowly by holding the blade with your off hand as the button is pressed. Closing the knife one-handed isn't too difficult as the resistance isn't overwhelming. There is also a safety next to the button which prevents it from being pressed in either the closed or the open position. Unfortunately, I can't show you the lockup because of the nature of the button lock, but trust me when I say that the lock feels very robust and would be a good option if you're looking for a high strength lock. The pocket clip is a simple bent piece of titanium, and as I understand it, it comes straight from Strider. Despite its diminutive appearance, it works really well and it ranks high among my favorite clips. Retention's very good. This knife won't leave your pocket unless you want it to, and yet it's easy to remove it when you need to use it, and it slides back into the pocket with little effort. The design is clearly from Strider, but it's been adapted to the automatic format by Protec. Protec has some of the best fit and finish that I've ever experienced, and I would urge you to handle one of their models in person, especially if you haven't checked out an auto before. They have many other collaborations with other designers, and they offer dressier pieces as well. Acquiring a Protec SMG is fairly simple, as they are sold through most of the popular knife retailers. This one in particular came from DLT Trading, but I know Blade HQ stocks them as well. Use of this knife for me has been heavy duty work primarily. I've used it to cut carpet, cut drywall, stuff like that with no problems. I also EDC this knife, but my job is more accepting of folding knives than most. Uh, so this probably isn't the best choice in an office setting. But you know what? It's a damn fun knife and I highly recommend you check it out. Alright y'all, disassembly of the Protex Strider SNG. Now if you don't think this knife is cool, you don't know what cool is, I just gotta be honest with you. Uh, this is a really fun knife, um, very well made. Protex fit and finish and attention to detail, uh, in my experience, has been second to none. Uh, this knife's really pleasing to work on and it's really pleasing to use. Um, I'm a big fan of the knurled aluminum scales. I think they did a great job with them. And the saber ground blade, well, arguably not the most useful blade grind. Um, in terms of its stock thickness, it thickens up very quickly, so it's not the sliciest blade grind in the world, but it can handle abuse. So if you want a hard-working knife that is tough and uh, ready to take on some heavier-duty tasks, this is a great option. I... Um, got this knife as a Christmas gift from my, from my dad. Uh, for the longest time, the Strider SMG was my grail knife, and I personally think that 
as much as I admire SNGs and as much as I admire the uh, design behind them, as well as SMFs, um, I think they're overpriced. Well, overpriced is a strong word. I think that they're they're out of my budget, and I think the ProTech models they get you 99% of the way there. And on top of that, you're getting Protex excellent, excellent fit and finish. So hard to argue with that. So let's get into the guts of the uh, Protec SMG. So first not noticeable thing I'm sure you guys have picked up on is our pivot is actually, uh, it requires a hex driver. So I'm using a different tool today because the iFixit set does not actually have the right uh, the right size drivers. It has metric hex drivers. You need the American, and uh, this is in this is a three thirty seconds. Let's go ahead and back that out. Now I'll let you know as well the uh, the body screws are all Torx. So this is the only one that you need to deal with that is not uh, not a typical size. So I think these are T eights on the body. So let me get my T8 here. All right. Oh, actually, I think they're T10s. How about that? Awesome. Yes, they're T10s. And the screws on this knife are one of my favorite things about it. Actually, I know that's a silly thing to say about a knife, but the screws, uh, Protex screws are really well done. Um, and I love the bead blasted finish. Now this is a limited edition. Um, this is the G9 model that they made for the gathering that year. Um, but there's nothing in particularly special about it other than its appearance um, and the fact that it just says has the G9 emblem right here. Other than that, it's just the same as uh, any of the other SNG models that you can pick up from Protec. Wow, these screws are really in there. Come on. There we go. All right. Yeah, these bad boys had some some red Loctite on them, but I've disassembled this knife before and I did not re-Loctite it with red, I used blue. But I guess that's still left over from the original assembly. Alright, so now that we have our screws out, the scale's going to lift right off. Check that out. Man, this is such a finely made knife. So here we have a uh, great view of how the button lock system operates. So this is on a coil spring. And when you click that button, which I'm not going to do right now because the blade would fly off, uh, that's what allows the blade to deploy with that snappy automatic action. That coil spring is basically storing up energy, and as soon as you click that button, it releases and it fires the blade. The button doubles as a lock, so when the blade is in the open position, the button, the button itself is locked up right here in this circular depression, so it's holding the blade open. So when you want to close it, you press the button down again and close the blade. It's very straightforward design. Um, I think people are afraid to disassemble automatics, and these are actually quite uh, easy to work on. They are not difficult to work on. All right, so let me see here. I want to see about removing that button, but I think first we need to get the blade out. You know what we're going to do before we do anything else, and this is what I should have done from the start, is you should do this with the blade deployed. There we go. And now let's take this off. And now the tension's not as strong on that spring. So yeah, you can see uh, this right here is our safety and the assembly for that's back here. The first time I disassembled this knife, I had to do that uh, because the safety had come loose. It's a simple tightening of this screw right here and that uh, tightens the safety back up. Not going to be disassembling that because there's really no need to. It's not something that requires maintenance. Um, but just so you guys know how it works, if your safety ever loosens up on these, which you don't need to use the safety, in my opinion, this knife's not going to fire in your pocket. And if it does, the seam of your pocket will stop the blade from going anywhere. Um, and once that spring has been opened, it doesn't, the energy is, is let out. It doesn't maintain that energy. So 
if the knife were to fire in your pocket, the energy would be let out, you'd pull the knife out, and it would very slowly kind of open up, but it wouldn't like extend like a, it would be very slow. So I don't recommend keeping the safety on, but you know, if you're around kids or something that might be around your knives, it's a good idea. Anyway, that can be tightened up with this simple Phillips head screw right here. All right, here we go. See, everything comes out much easier now. That was silly of me to not, uh, to not deploy the knife before I took it apart. So here's our button lock and our deployment button, our double, I guess the lock technically is right here. This is the, this is the deployment button up top. Good look at that. So I'll sit that over here near the pivot. Here's our coil spring. You can see how tightly wound this guy is. Um, you can get replacement coil springs fairly easily. There's some uh, websites online that stock these parts. I uh, just want to make sure you're getting the right one for your model, but I'm, I'm not sure how standardized these are, these are across Protex line. I would imagine they'd be pretty standard though. So we'll set that right here. You can replace these parts too with, uh, with other like mother of pearl inlaid buttons, things like that. There's a lot of customization you can do to these automatics. So I'm going to take the spring out. This goes with our, our button. And that's pretty much it, guys. You see, there's no um, washers. Uh, everything just functions automatically inside of the knife. Because of that action, you don't really have a need for washers. Um, oop, I forgot about our pocket clip, guys. Let me get that off. So the pocket clips are titanium. And as I understand it, they come directly from Strider. So Protec, obviously the design is from Strider. Um, but the pocket clips as well are directly from Strider. Protec assembles everything else themselves. Now does that pivot come out? That's not wanting to come out. I'm not going to force it out. Yeah, that's not going to want. It's not wanting to come out at all. Give it one more little push. Nope. I'm not going to force that pivot out. We're going to leave that in there for now. You can see how tightly fit it is inside that, inside the opposite scale here. So, as much as I love this knife, I'm not going to be, uh, I don't want to mess it up by trying to force that out. All right, guys, so here's your exploded view. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and get these parts cataloged here. We've got our 154CM blade. 154CM is an ingot steel, and it's older, but it's still an excellent steel. It, uh, it holds a decent edge uh, for a decent amount of time. It, it takes an edge very nicely, a very fine, sticky edge. We have our aluminum scales. Look at all that milling on the inside. It's so well done. Um, obviously knurled on this side. There's a little marker there for the uh, G9 limited edition. Um, again, no real big differences, it's just you, you get this emblem and the knurling, but I'm pretty sure you can get the knurling on other models too. And the color and all that is, is for the G9 in particular, but you can get much, very similar Protec SMGs. So our safety side, and uh, we have three body screws, uh, pocket clip screw, the titanium clip from Strider, our button lock, our spring for the button lock, pivot screw and our uh, coil spring. So let's go ahead and get this guy cleaned up. And as always, I am using regular old soap and water. One thing you'll notice on this blade is that uh, the blade stops are mounted directly to the blade. Uh, you see that on Strider's knives. You see that on Hinderer's. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I mean, it's a good implementation. It's kind of confusing sometimes though, because you think, oh, it's got thumb studs. Nope. Those are not thumb studs. I suppose you could try to use them as such, but I don't think they they work very well in that uh, in that regard. Get our coil spring cleaned up just a little bit here, and I'll go ahead and clean the button up a bit too. You can get aftermarket buttons um, made out of mother of pearl and things like that. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, so let's get this beast back together here. Actually, before we do that, I am gonna put a little bit of oil on. 
So I'm using mineral oil, my favorite oil to use. It's just readily available. Uh, it's food safe. A lot of benefits with mineral oil. It's a little bit thick, but uh, you know, it's not terrible. And I'm, you guys are probably gonna tell me I'm putting on too much, and uh, I probably am, but I don't really worry about it all that much. All right, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out on the blade to you guys, check out this side. You can see the area here that's milled out for the, uh, for the coil spring. There's a hole there as well that we're gonna try to plug into here. All right, guys, so I'm going to take our coil spring here and I'm gonna pop this little tab through this hole uh, on this, again, this, I'm not, this blade's black, so it might be kinda of hard to see, but on that milled out section here, there's that little hole. I'm gonna pop this through here. Great, so, oop, keeps wanting to come out. All right, here we go. So that's what that looks like when it's done properly. The tricky part here is that the button needs to be, oops, the button needs to be in place kind of in tandem with the blade and this tab has to roll back to this position and you have to drop it in there. It's not the easiest thing in the world here. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to take out uh, some tools here. Actually, I'll put a flat head on my iFixit driver and just see if I can kind of hold that tab back using the flat head button here Can you sit there for me no you're not going to want to sit there are you we'll deal with you in a minute all right let's try it like this Oh, so close come on there we go okay so now the trick is up oh, it fell out let's get the spring in place all right so we've got the spring in place we've got the button in place we just need to get the tab for the coil spring in place all right that's in place now everything just needs to bingo we got it guys so that is it everything is in place now so I'm gonna carefully drop this scale on the top here Beautiful. First up, we'll, you know, before we continue, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the pivot. All right, where's my pivot? Here it is. Pivot there. I'm really good at getting this stuff on my fingers and not on the screws. That'll work. Again, this is the 330 seconds hex head, hex driver, I should say. Let's get that loosely in the position there. All right. All right, guys, let's get these body screws locked tied it up. All right, guys, so we have our body screws in place. Let's have a look at the, <laughs> might have heard my dog shaking over there. Let's have a look at the fit. Everything's looking good. Um, one thing I will say with these autos in particular, when you put those scales back on, you wanna be sure you're really pressed down good on the, uh, on the pivot area. Got a little bit of blade play, so let's get that out here. Still a little bit of play. This knife has such tight tolerances. And Protex work, it's, all right, no play. Let me back that off a touch. Protex work is just so, everything is so dialed in. See here, see how far we can go here to get this thing loosened up. 
you want to ride that cusp of just tight enough to where you don't feel the blade play and then your action is going to be absolutely stellar. Alright, let me feel that again. Yeah, that's it. Alright guys. Oh yeah. A little bit of play. No play. Let's try loosening that up. It's a little bit stiff. No play. Oops. No play. I think we got it. Still seems a little slow to me. Let me just keep fooling with it here. There we go. Nice and snappy. I like it. Perfect. All right. Yeah, guys. I highly recommend Protec. They're not. You know, they're not that. They're not much more expensive than a, a regular old manual knife, but they're extraordinarily well made. This guy's lockup is is fantastic. No vertical play. No side to side. When you get it set up, it's it's perfect. All right, guys. Let's get the pocket clip back on. That's all we have left here. Get a little bit of. Loctite here. I'm just going to pick it up off the side of the spout here, actually. And let's get our... So this has that little tongue. Kind of an odd design, but that tongue simply drops into the back there. One thing that I will point out that's nice is the smoothed area, the smoothed over area of the, uh, of the scale that allows for the uh, pocket clip to slide in easily. Here we go. Get the pocket clip aligned here. All right. Such a tough looking knife, man. This is absolutely one of my favorites in my collection. Um, just because of how badly I wanted a Strider and how impressed I am with Protex. Attention to detail uh, their designs and their uh, their machining work is just superb. So you can nudge that. One issue with this pocket clip design is that it's just the one screw and the tongue. Um, so it can be a little loosey goosey on that pocket clip sometimes. I think that looks pretty good. I can't stop, guys. I can't stop fiddling with this. Getting a little bit of play there. I think that's good. Perfect. There we go. No play. All right, guys. Thank you all for stopping by. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's glad to glad to have you all watching. I appreciate it. So y'all be well, take care of yourselves, and uh, this has been Takedown Talk, and I'll see y'all next time.